feels like only yesterday that we were first introduced to 4G, and already 5G has become something that we take for granted. Now, we're not done yet. The era of 6G is on the way. For more, we're joined by Professor Joseph Jorna from Northeastern University this morning. Welcome to the program. Good morning. Thank you. Good morning. Professor, first off, what is 6G? I mean, how much more advanced and intricate is it than its predecessor 5G in terms of speed, efficiency, and significance? Tell us. Excellent. So 6G, at the end of the day, is a collection of technologies that are supposed to, on the one hand, yes, give us faster data rates, the possibility to collect more and more devices, and to give you a number, the target that we have in mind is one terabit per second. That's 50 times faster than 5G on a good day. Okay? But beyond data rates, what we're also looking is at making our communication systems aware of where they are. So as important as communications in 6G, we talk about sensing in such a way that, for example, your cell phone can understand its surroundings so it can optimize the communication. So ultimately, you can make things more reliable and more energy efficient. And of course, whenever there is understanding, learning, there is artificial intelligence. So in 6G, we're going to see you know, a revolution in the hardware and a revolution in how we use that hardware, the software. That's what we expect. Sounds amazing. Now, 6G is still under development. And how close are we to 6G being commercialized and used? How far has 6G tech development come so far? Indeed, it seems far, but it's not that far. So just to give you some temporal reference, um, the first version of 5G, the first standard for 5G was approved in 2018. And actually it was in South Korea, the first commercial deployments were in 2019. Right. Um, usually we have, we have 10 year gaps between generations. Mm -hmm. So strictly speaking, we would expect to have a standard by 2028. Of course, we don't know if that will happen. So if we say 2030, that's kind of safe. Now, how far are we? Well, as I said, 6G, it's a collection of technologies. Some of them, for example, in my group, we have been developing for over 15 years now, which sounds kind of a lot, right? So for example, in a university, we do fundamental research, research that we don't know if it will work or not. Well, today we know that some of these enabling technologies are ready and I do expect them to see them in five years, uh, maybe a little bit more, but that's how far we are. Right, you've already slightly mentioned the usefulness of 6G, but is there a, a particular uh, function or practical implication that you personally look forward to? Is there one? Yes, there is. So I honestly believe that 6G is going to be the technology or collection of technologies that will help to finally take off when it comes to immersive virtual and extended reality as well as holographic communications uh, for some people that sounds a little bit of science fiction but actually the technologies are there and i do expect them to see them and i do hope that this is what will eventually make 6g take off these experiences come under different names i'm sure you've heard about the metaverse or different virtual platforms you need a way in which everyone without needing extremely expensive hardware or connectivity to be able to use it. So that's one of them. And when I think of immersive reality or holographic communications, I think not just of entertainment. I think of, for example, changing the way in which we teach in universities or even in high schools, or to change the way in which, you know, what remote working means. If I cannot just see in 2D what's happening on the other side, but even potentially virtually touch what's on the other side, I can change the way we work. I can change the way we take care of healthcare. Of course, all these things beyond entertainment, which usually is what ends up making the money. Right, plus we can't get enough of technology, right? I guess that we cannot. We're, we're good at marketing, yes. Right, <laughs> but before we let you go, Professor, why do we even need uh, 6G? Is not 5G good enough? I mean, and also, will there be 7G, 8G, and 10G and beyond? I'm afraid that the answer is yes, uh, there will be many more generations. So for your, the first part of your question, uh, first of all, if we suddenly all of us try to, let's all jump into the metaverse and let's have this interview, not just the two of us, but all the audience from this TV channel on, in the metaverse, the network infrastructure would not be able to support it. 
And that's the type of experience that we're trying to change. No? Let's, let's move the news to an interactive session with everyone sharing the same virtual space. So we need 6G. Now, after 6G, what do we expect? Absolutely, there's going to be seven, eight, you, you call it. Mm -hmm. And for example, as I mentioned before, if 15 years ago, we were developing some of the technologies that finally we will see in 6G. As you can imagine, in a university, where we're, what we're doing is very fundamental research. We're already looking into what may be in 7G. And I don't want to scare people, but for example, think of a 7G application as the opportunity to connect to the network, to the metaverse, to wherever you want, not necessarily by using a cell phone with your hands or looking at a screen or talking to a device, but actually maybe having a direct brain to internet connection. I know it sounds scary, but you know, till 7G, we have 15 years, so things can change a lot. Right. All right. Thank you, Professor Jornet. Thank you so much for joining us this morning all the way from Boston. Thank you for the invitation. Have a good one. You too.